the regimes what we use are the basal bolus regime that is you give one basal and three boluses to cover up for the three meals or we routinely give twice premix before the morning meal and before the evening meal you have a intermediate acting insulin and you have some prandial component also to cover up after meal these are the two common regimes what we use and obviously in a severe critical ill we use only the infusion not the predetermined uh, insulin regimes like this these are the uh, regime basic differences between the insulin the basal ones being the glargine and detimer they reduce the hepatic glucose output they prevent the catabolism and easy to use and titrate because it's a single injection whereas the bolus ones are related to the meal related excursions and you have more difficult to control may be useful if you have erratic meal pattern because you can on, you need to only inject them when you are taking a meal so it's important to know that you can use it as per the convenience premix are what the ratios 25 75 30 70 so these are meal related injections you need to have a regimented lifestyle regular predictable eating pattern with these but the convenience being it's only a single injection which can be upgraded to once twice or thrice daily so that patients have more ease of administration than when compared with a uh, third person injecting it so that is important to know when you look at the stages of insulin therapy what we do is first we initiate then we titrate and we intensify so these are the three steps when we look at insulin management so initiation somebody who requires insulin obviously will be started depending on the glucose values be it on a basal bolus or a premix or a infusion and then you titrate based on what the prevalent glucose values are Uh, this is the most important slide as far as glucose management in the covid ward 90% of the time you use insulin and this will be useful whenever you are giving your insulin regimes to the patient if you are looking at a basal bolus regime or a infusion we shall discuss these two separately the basal bolus as i said 50% will go to basal and 50% will go to bolus in an average human being the insulin requirement is between 0.5 to 0.7 units per kg per day so when you decide that he requires insulin if you take 60 kg as an average weight so if you start from the lower border that is 0.5 units per kg the patient will require about 30 units of insulin per day so 30 units out of which half of it will be basal and half of it will be bolus so half basal meaning 15 units of basal and 15 units of bolus which is subdivided into three meals depending on the meal if it is a major meal in the breakfast you can go to morning eight units and then other two lower units or breakfast and lunch more and dinner very minimal so you can split your bolus dosages as per you as per the patient this is only the starting thereafter what you will do is as per the glucose chart what you are monitoring you will keep upgrading calculating the daily requirement and then keep upgrading as per the need by adding up a supplemental insulin to it so that the dosages may go say today you started with say 30 units tomorrow it may go to 40 day after it may go to 50 so it depends on how much the patient is requiring as per the given situation the second thing what we do is what is known as in severely ill or a critically ill or icu setups we use insulin infusion there is 50 units of regular infusion is always mind you with the regular insulin that is short acting insulin there is no infusions prepared with the intermediate or longer acting insulin so it's important to know that only the shorter acting insulin is given as a intravenous infusion and analog insulins have less role to play here because 
intravenous the pharmacokinetics are the same between analogs and regular whereas subcutaneous the analogs do better you dissolve 50 units in the 50 ml syringe and we set the infusion rate intravenous in ml per hour so if you put it at 1 ml per hour he will go at 1 unit per hour so that's important no this is easy to remember 50 units in 50 ml and infusion rate is st standardly set the glue the infusion rate is set based on the prevalent glucose just divide the prevalent glucose by 100 you will get a figure that much should be the ml per hour that is the infusion rate so if you get 250 as a blood glucose and you should just put the infusion pump at 2.5 ml per hour so you keep adjusting this based on the glucose values and based on the other factors whether he is eating not eating and whether the glucose is coming down as per the expected norms or not or whether patient is dehydrated or not so a lot of other factors will help in adjusting the dosages but to start with and to continue infusion and blood sugar divided by 100 will be the infusion pump rate so these are the important things whenever we manage the patient in a in uh, glucose for the glucose in a covid ward <clears throat> When you are injecting subcutaneously, most of the mishaps happen in the wards for the sake of misusing or misappropriation of the needle and the vial. The insulin conventionally in India comes with 40 international unit per ml or a 100 unit per ml. This is basically the concentration of the insulin. Abroad, even now here we have 200, 300 also and abroad you have 500 unit per ml also the important thing to know 1 ml of this will give you only 40 units whereas 1 ml of this will give you 100 units so the difference being the red capped insulin syringe you have to use it only for 40 whereas the orange cap you have to use it only with 100 don't go by the outer numbers alone if you pick up this syringe and just give 10 units drawing from this vial you are actually giving very less dosage whereas if you pick up this syringe and give 10 units from this you are actually giving two and a half times more so it's that is why it is important to know whether the syringe is actually being used appropriate to the vial most of the times the hypo and hyperglycemia happen because of uh, rather i won't say misuse it is like a lack of proper uh, uh, matching between the syringe and the vial what you are using.